How do you manage your company invoicing? Most people who run a small business will either do it all manually with no centralised repository of invoices or pay outrageous amounts of money for packages to perform what's essentially a pretty simple task. So we've created a free tool to help you manage your invoices effectively. You can download the tool for free at xl-macros.co.uk and I'm going to go through the functionality now. So when you open the tool, the first thing you need to do is to uh, enable macros. There's lots of macros in the tool and, and they need to be enabled in order for the tool to work correctly. Once you've enabled macros, then go into the setup sheet. So there's um, some very simple setup which needs to be performed the very first time that you use the tool. The first thing is around the invoice number and how it's generated. So an invoice number starts with a prefix and then um, contains a number and that number gets gradually incremented for every invoice you get uh, you create. So I want to call my invoices, um, start them with the letters EM for Excel macro. So I'm going to change this to EM and I want to start my number from number one. What this means is that the first invoice that I create will be numbered EM00001 and the second will be EM00002, etc. If I wanted to start off with EM00100, um, then I would have 100 in there, but I'm quite happy to start with one. So the VAT percentage is 20%. Uh, I filled in my company information already just to save a bit of time on the video and I've already filled in the comments uh, that I want to show at the bottom of my invoices but you will need to fill in these pieces of information. So now I come back to the invoice sheet and the first thing I do is um, I create a new invoice and what the new invoice will do is it will create a new invoice number based on the format that I've just provided. So I click this button and you can see that EM00001 is now pulled through as my invoice number. So I should say that um, this button that I've just clicked is part of a um, custom ribbon that we've created for this tool, uh, which is called Invoice. It's next to the Home ribbon and um, before the Insert ribbon. And we've got a number of buttons within this invoice ribbon which have been created in order to make this invoice tool work correctly. So I click new, the invoice number pulled through and it's provided us today's date as the invoice date. My company information has also pulled through. If I would like at this stage I can edit this um, information so I could for instance change the font of my company name if I wanted to. I could even add a company logo if I um, desired. Okay, But I'm actually quite happy with the font so I'm going to leave it as it is. What I am going to do is though create my first invoice, so I'm going to add in some information about who I'm invoicing to. So I'm just going to put in a fictional person into the invoice to and ship to columns. I'm then going to add in some products that have been purchased from me. So let's say we've they've bought the invoice tracker tool and the quantity is one, they've bought one of them and the cost is zero. Uh, because it's free. In fact I'm going to put in a cost because it, it doesn't make a very good demonstration if I show a free tool. So that costs let's say 100 and let's say they've bought one of the other tools uh, which is the um, holiday vacation tracker tool. Now that tool is also free but let's say that one is 200 pounds. Okay. Um, now I'm only going to put in two lines for demonstration purposes. Um, so what I'll do um, to remove these other lines is to come into uh, the invoice um, ribbon and I will use this button here which is uh, to the remove the line and you can see that when I click that button the line disappears down here. So I'm going to remove these two lines as well and that makes my invoice look a lot neater. You'll then notice that the uh, the VAT has been calculated automatically. The total VAT co calculated down here. The total including and excluding VATs are pulling through correctly. And I've got my comments at the bottom of the invoice. So I'm quite happy with that invoice now. And once I've given it a final check over, I click the finalize button. And what the finalize button does is it locks down the invoice. I cannot change 
this particular invoice number once I've clicked that finalize button. And this gives me some control and certainty that I'm not changing invoices after I've sent them out to the customer. So I've clicked the finalize button. I've had a pop-up box asking me to confirm that I'm ready. I'm going to say yes. It then gives me a confirmation that the invoice has been successfully finalized. Okay, great. Once I've finalized, I can then create a PDF of this invoice. So I'm going to create a PDF in this file here. Okay, uh, and that has then created a PDF. Just to demonstrate um, that I've created that PDF, um, I'm going to. I'm just going to create another one because that will put up the folder that I uh, saved it in. Um, and uh, what's today's date? Today's date is this one. So let me just. Oh, I've just created the same one again. So that wasn't very clever. Um, okay, so I'm going to just right click on there and open it. And you can see that the PDF there has been created. And I could attach that to an email and send it out to a customer. OK, so that's how to PDF. I'm actually not going to save this again because I've already saved it. So I'll cancel. That's just telling me that I've cancelled. So that's OK. I'm happy with that. OK, I can also print it. I won't demonstrate that now, but it will do exactly the same thing. So I can just print it out. I can then fax it if, wish, if I wish to, or I may want to um, send it in the post to the customer. I may want to put it in my own folder for my records. That's fine. OK, um, so once I've created an invoice, um, I can create another one. Uh, or what I can do is I can come into my archive and what my archive does is it shows me all of the invoices I've created. Now, if I if I wanted to invoice Joe Blogs again for maybe a, a different product that he's purchased, then I can actually click in here and I can go to the clone invoice button. And this is a really useful shortcut in order to create invoices uh, quicker to customers that maybe we're regularly invoicing. So I've created, uh, clicked the clone invoice button and that's told me, yes, we've created an invoice. It's been successful and we've allocated this invoice number to it. I can then see the cloned invoice here. I can actually make changes to this invoice um, until I click the finalize button. So clearly I don't want to create the same, exactly the same invoice twice. So maybe I'll say I'm actually, I've sold them version two now and maybe I've sold them version three of this. The prices are now slightly cheaper because it's just an upgrade. Um, and then I'm ready to finalize again. And I'm going to finalize this one. And like before, I can PDF, print, etc. If I come back to my archive, what I can then see is two invoices that have been created. One and two. And as I click on them, they will be highlighting uh, in this view. I can also use these buttons here to go to the next invoice or the previous invoice. And if I go beyond the end, then it will tell me I can't go any further. What's also quite neat is that as I click on the first one or the second one, then the uh, associated invoice in here will also be updating. So if I come in here and I click invoice two, then when I come back into the invoice view, then invoice number two is now highlighted. I can also use these next and previous buttons when I'm in the invoice view. Sorry, I'm on number two, so I need to go previous, next, previous, next. And you can see the invoice number here changing as I iterate between the invoices. So that's really everything about creating invoices. I can create a new one now if I would like. Um, and if I click new, then all of these uh, information here about who we're invoicing, who we're shipping to, all of the products, all of that information will then default back to um, the standard blank template. However, my invoice number is still incrementing as normal and my company information is still pulling through correctly. If I wanted to say I had a thousand invoices and I wanted to find one in particular, I can use this find invoice button. I can type in the invoice number I want to find and it will then take me back to that finalized invoice. It's worth saying though, once you have finalized an invoice, I can't make any changes to it. It's all fully protected and locked down. 
So um, you need to make sure that you are happy with the invoice before you finalize. Okay, just some other functionality to be aware of. So let's just say EM0002 has now paid. I can actually um, come in here, select that uh, invoice, and I can record a payment against it. So this tells me there's £300 to pay on that invoice. I'm going to uh, record £300 against it. And then within this sheet here, it will tell me that the amount is 300 They've paid 300 There's nothing left to pay. And actually, I can close down that invoice uh, by clicking this button here. So let me now click that button. Uh, you can see the status is currently active. Um, I'm sure I would like to close the invoice, so I will click yes. That then confirms that I've closed it and the status changes to closed. Uh, maybe this first invoice was created in error, in which case I haven't recorded any money against it. I can cancel that invoice now and that will change that status to cancelled. Even though I've closed this invoice, I can still clone the invoice and create a new one based off it if I would like. So each time I'm doing making any changes to any of these invoices, the tool is automatically saving for me to ensure that even if I shut down now, then the latest changes that I've made will be retained for the next time I open the file. So that's all of the functionality um, contained with this in, within the invoice tracker and creator tool. Um, we think the tool is pretty useful. Um, it's not too complex to use, uh, but it has all of the main functionality that you may wish from a invoice um, invoicing tool. Um, we really hope you find the tool useful. Please go ahead and download it from xl-macros.co.uk. It is entirely free. Um, there is absolutely no strings attached. Um, this is the training video for it. Um, we hope you find the tool useful. If you do find it useful, I would ask, please, could you subscribe to our channel? Um, this will mean that you'll be notified of any more free tools that we make available in the future. Um, also, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Um, but if there's any functionality that you would like to see in the future in this invoice tracker tool or any of our tools, then please just leave a comment below the video or on our web page. Um, and just tell us the enhancements that you would like and we will promise to uh, continue to evolve the tool in the future depending on people's comments and, and what functionality people want to see. So um, thanks for watching. I'm going to end the video now. Bye-bye. Um,